But now I'd like to move on to a few other things, a few words about geotourism. Already Charles Darwin said that volcanoes are beautiful for travels. They make beautiful landscapes. Here's a few old drawings of Tenerife. And uh, here's an old map of Iceland, also a volcanic region. And if you look very carefully here, there you see the Hecla volcano erupting, which was believed to be the entrance to hell. And uh, here you see all these wonderful creatures that the artist has added there to signal that the entrance to hell is surrounded by all these mystical creatures that protect the area. So there has always been a fascination of volcanic areas, and it goes back to ancient times. Here we see some images, and this is actually my nephew in the top right. I took him to La Palma a few years ago, and this is at the visitor center. But the bottom image on the left is actually from Hawaii, and you see how people flock to volcanic areas to experience this. It's not always ideal because there was the big White Island disaster in New Zealand, you might have heard. Tourists were actually on the volcano while it erupted. Bit irresponsible, I think, personally, but you shouldn't go there when the volcano is active. But when you go to places like this, Iceland here, then, well, during COVID, Iceland was almost bankrupt again, and then they switched on the volcano to get all the tourism. <laughs> And they have uh, switched it on again last summer, so <laughs> it's a great source. Actually, during the last summer, the first day of the eruption had already 10,000 vis visitors. Can you believe it? So, and of course, they all need accommodation, they all need rental cars and things like that. So Iceland is making a ton of money from volcanoes. So here's a few impressions. You see how many people are flocking around. And these volcanoes are very harmless. They're not explosive, so you can actually stand around and watch. But, well, you shouldn't get too close, obviously, but uh, yeah, it's very nice. So, and this concept is, of course, um, well, exploited all over the world. Here, um, an old postcard from Lassen Volcanic Park, and then Kilauea military camp. You have all sorts of variations, volcano tours in Indonesia, Iceland tours, etc. So wherever there is a volcano, you likely also find geotourism. And uh, you can do all sorts of activities, jeep safaris, and uh, you can do volcano surfing, things like that. So, and here's a few more impressions from the various areas around the, wo the world. So, having said this, I also would like to draw attention to Pompeii at Vesuvius, which is now a tourist site, but it's actually an archaeological site. And it's, of course, a city that got covered with volcanic material in 79 AD. So here's one of the earliest photos from 1899. You see Vesuvius in the background with its, uh, with its gas plume and the excavated area there. And this is an artist's impression of how the eruption might have looked like back in 79 AD. And uh, here in the top right, you see um, part of an excavation where we still have the ash cover over a Roman road. And then we have learned a lot about how Romans lived because of volcanoes, because we had all of these frozen in situations. Partly a little bit, well, yeah, spooky, I have to admit. But on the other side, the image in the lower bottom right, it's effectively a fast food restaurant, a Roman fast food restaurant. I always call it a Roman McDonald's. And we wouldn't have known about this without volcanoes preserving it. So volcanoes and culture, just towards the end, a few words about that. And uh, volcanoes are often revered. They are often believed to be associated with powerful, magical spirits. And here we have Pele, of course, the goddess of volcanoes on Hawaii. And uh, as you all know, she is easily calmed down with gin. So, uh, but I personally think if you give her too much, she might get angry again. It's up to, uh, yeah, but you can try. So, and this is, of course, uh, in uh, various cultures, also in Europe. Vulcan, uh, we're actually the god of fire, or Hephaestus in Greek. Um, he lives under Etna, and he has his forge there whenever he's angry, and he uh, hammers his uh, metal tools, then the volcano is erupting above. And uh, this is also ancient mythology. And in fact, it's quite perceptive. The Romans and Greeks knew that volcanoes and metals belong together. So there's a lot of knowledge already in that. So a few words about Iceland as well. People often ask, 
Could it be that Icelandic culture has to do with volcanoes? And the answer is, I think so. You may have heard about the Edda, the old book of the Vikings. And uh, there, there is the description of the Fimbul winter, the winter at the end of time before everything breaks down. And I believe it's actually modeled on a volcanic winter. So it says there in the Edda, there will be winter and the greatest frosts and keen winds will happen and the sun will do no good. And there will be three of these, three nasty long winters. And it continues to say, the sun will turn black and lava will sink and land will sink into the sea. The brightest star will vanish from the skies. Fire will rage forth and flames will lick the heavens itself. Boulders will slam together so big that trolls will tumble. I don't think so, but anyway. So, um, and this is a description of a really intense volcanic eruption. And it just happens that prior to the Edda being written, there was a big eruption, probably in 936 AD, the Elkjau fires. And there's other references in the Saxon Chronicle, for example, that says that uh, the mountains of the north are said to have erupted in flames in many places in the years before King Heinrich died. And this was, of course, to make King Heinrich look better. And um, here we have evidence for a big volcanic eruption that was likely inspiring the descriptions of the Asia gods and the end of time. But this is, of course, very common in many other cultures. This is now from Indonesia. And here you see the dancing people in the top left. And actually it says here in this newspaper clipping, Japanese villagers attempt to appease the volcano gods. I tell you, it didn't work. The volcano did erupt. But uh, people are trying to make this part of their culture and it's becoming part of rituals there. This is, of course, true all over the world. If you go to Mexico, Popocatepetl and Iztaccíhuatl, the two volcanoes next to Mexico City, one is very angry, the other one is not. And Iztaccíhuatl is the gentle princess of the Aztecs, and uh, Popocatepetl is a fearsome warrior. And the message in there is that Popocatepetl is very dangerous. Iztaccíhuatl is not. She is a calm volcano. So there is messages in these stories, and therefore they're part of this culture. And here, let me go to Japan for a second. This is Fuji. Uh, Fujiyama, the revered volcano of the Japanese people. And uh, here is uh, Hokusai's drawings from the uh, 1600s. And uh, he actually put together these drawings of Fujiyama. He had different visions of it. And he started to write little poems on this. And this was actually the start of our comics as we know them today. Mangas, as they call them in Japanese. And uh, volcanoes have actually been the start of little comics. So if you read, uh, if you read um, uh, uh, all sorts of comics these days from superheroes to Donald Duck, the original concept actually was inspired by volcanoes. So, and of course in Europe we also had a lot of uh, uh, religious connotations here from Italy. This is uh, where people are praying that uh, the saints will actually make the volcanoes stop. So there is uh, various links to that, and uh, you see various old paintings, religious paintings, and I'm showing two here with a volcano in the background, so various saints are approached in the hope that they calm down the volcano. And these beliefs continue to the present day, maybe not always in a religious way, but volcanic stones are often believed to have a certain energy, and in the top right here, there it says, energy and success coming from volcanoes, if you buy this certain mineral and wear it at a necklace, for example. So, and of course, there's art, and uh, volcanoes have inspired art. Going back here to 1684, this is Vesuvius volcano in Italy, and uh, here's a little time travel. So this is 1752, another artist was drawing the volcano, showing an eruption. Here, a little later, 1766, and uh, then again, 1779, and then in 1787, somebody had the wonderful smart idea to use the volcano, and this is the first recorded olive oil advertisement in the world. <laughs> and of course, it's supposed to give you strength from the volcano, so this olive oil must be particularly good. One of the first photographs that we know of 
1876 or 78 is actually of a volcano, the Bay of Naples and Vesuvius volcano. And then, of course, we have all sorts of literature that allows us to explore how things go when you go to volcanoes. Jules Verne, for example, he described the journey to the center of the Earth, and he was entering the Earth in Sneifelsjökull, that's a volcano in Iceland, and he went all the way down to the center of the Earth, and he came up at Stromboli. Of course, we know it's not quite working this way, but he realized that volcanoes are connected somewhere underground to some larger supply area in the Earth mantle, and uh, he has described it in his fictional way, but he actually had a point. So this is quite spectacular, I feel. He was quite a visionary. Now, of course, volcanoes also occur in movies. This was one of my favorite movies when I was a six-year-old boy, and um, this is Krakatoa, and it was really, oh my God, I was so thrilled. I watched it several times. I watched it again a few years ago, and I was far less thrilled. <laughs> and then I looked at the title again. It says Krakatoa, east of Java. Actually, I realized, oh my God, Krakatoa is west of Java. <laughs> I am not so impressed anymore, but it did inspire me when I was young. Then, of course, there's all sorts of modern-day movies. You can go and um, you um, can see Dante's Peak, where they drive through lava. I don't think it works this way. Or you have a volcano, uh, where we have an eruption in Los Angeles. In the center of Los Angeles, the volcano erupts, and you can have a volcano menu to go with that. So uh, it makes it probably very spicy. And um, there, you see, volcanoes are still an amazing inspirational concept to this day. Also in music, it's uh, quite widely used. I came across this band. I don't think they're very good, but uh, they're called Krakatoa. And they are depicted here as a school rock band in the upper image. And then a little later, they looked a little tougher in the lower image. And uh, then on the right-hand side, this is a radio station from New Jersey, and it says, uh, it's real and constantly erupting, so they also use the concept of volcano. And um, I visited an old school friend a little while ago in Berlin, and we went out for a boys' night, and there I saw this poster here of a support band called Magma Kammer, which means magma chamber. So they're implying that their rock and roll is very energetic, I guess. And then, of course, I have three little daughters, and they love Vajana, as it's called in Sweden, and uh, it's different names in different countries, but this is also about Chakar, the lava monster, and Chakar then gives rise to the Green Island. So in that concept, in that fictional concept, we also have the constructive and destructive powers of volcano encapsulated. So I'd like to quickly summarize, volcanoes do a lot of good, believe it or not. They are not just bad. I actually think they have a wrong reputation. I think volcanoes are better than we think. They produce a lot of metals and gemstones. They allow us to produce building materials, and we use them in industry as abrasion materials, and we also get a lot of geothermal power. They are linked to food, drink, and cosmetical products, and of course, geotourism and culture is also very much linked to volcanoes. So, Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you found that useful.